Recently, I've been experimenting with DJing with this piece of software. It's called Mix, M-I-X-X-X, -X -X, and it's a open source DJ app, which means you don't pay anything for it. It works on Mac, Windows, and as I'm running it here on Linux, and it is a good experiment, a good piece of second DJ software to mess with. Why not? It's absolutely free, and you might be surprised at what it can do. If you're interested in knowing more about it, we've reviewed it fully on Digital DJ Tips. Go check out that review. In this video, though, I want to give you the basics about setting it up. Some of the things I discovered when I was setting it up that might not be obvious, I might save you the time it takes you to watch this video and then some. So let's talk through, I think there's about 12 points here things in this software that might not be immediately obvious that you might want to look at. Starting then, the very beginning, make it so that it's how you want it. You don't need to have everything it can do on the screen at once. Let me talk you through where you do that and what the options are. So across the top here, there's various things that you can turn on and off. For instance, you can have a huge library like this, or you can have the other controls showing. You're probably going to want the other controls showing, right? Equally, you can turn the waveforms on and off if you want, the big parallel waveforms at the top. You can select four decks or two. And most people will want to DJ in two deck mode for the for the screen space, but hey, you get the choice. You can turn the mixer in the center on and off. See there, the mixer's now disappeared. Now, if you've got it working with a piece of external DJ gear, I've, for instance, got it working here with the Pioneer DJ, uh, Alpha Theta, DDJ, Flex 4, then you probably don't need those mixer controls in the middle of the screen. And in the end, you might want to save yourself that real estate by turning them off. It has effects. You can turn the effects strip on and off here. And you can see the effects strip has appeared when I click it on. It's got a simple sampler here, which is what these sample slots are. If you don't use it, you can turn them off. Equally, if the thing you're plugging into has got internal inputs, this mic auxiliary button will turn those on and off. And so you can have those feeding through the software should your audio card allow it. And if allow it, and if not, why would you have them on? Also, let's look over at this side. So over this side, we've got settings. I'll tell you why this is confusing in a minute. But for now, I'll click on it. So you can see there's all kinds of extra settings here. Now, some of these are duplicated. For instance, the mixer will be turned on again if you click in here. But we also have various other options. So within the mixer, I can decide if I want to see or not see the main and headphones mix controls. Again, it's saving me space if I don't. EQ kill buttons, crossfader can be taken off if you don't use the crossfader, etc., etc. And there's all kinds of things. You can tweak the effects units. You can tweak the sample. You can tweak whether you see the preview decks and the cover art in the library. I never look at cover art, so I don't have that switched on, but you might want that switched on. So you want to experiment with these and you can even change the size of the decks if you want to show the decks themselves. The word spinny will show you the decks. You can see they've now appeared. I can change the size of them by clicking on here, full, compact, or mini. So lots of stuff to play with there. I don't have the deck controls on at all. They're not my thing, so we'll turn that off again. Right, so you can hide that by clicking up here. Now at this point, you might think, hang on a second, surely DJ software should have more settings than that. You'd think that settings menu, menu at the top would give you those settings, it doesn't. And if you're new to this, it might take you a second to find the real settings. You do it by pressing the Control or Command and P for preferences. They call them preferences. So Control or Command and P will get them up. And when you make that keystroke, this is what you see. A preferences panel, panel appears here. So for the rest of my tips, we're going to be in this preferences panel. So the first thing you're going to want to do is configure the audio, and that's what sound hardware means here, for your system. Depending upon what you've got it plugged into or not plugged into, this is gonna be different. I'm running a Linux system here. I'm just using it with the basic default ALSA sound API. And down at the bottom here is the important bit. Here you're gonna select whatever you've got plugged in. In this instance, I've got the DDJ Flex 4 plugged in. So I've selected that. And then within the DDJ Flex 4, I've selected channels one and two for the main output and channels three and four for the headphones output, which is very normal. But you're going to want to experiment here. And so the question that we've been asked so many times over the years is why can't I get my headphones to work? Or why is the same thing coming out of my headphones that's coming out of my speakers, etc., etc. This is always where you do that. And so one little tip, if you find that what you think should be coming out of your headphones is coming out of your speakers and vice versa, you can set these to the opposite. So you would set this one three and four to one and two, and you set one and two to three and four. 
to try and reverse that and get that how it should be. So that's where you adjust the audio settings. Now, the other audio setting we're going to want to adjust, at least take a look at, is the audio buffer. The audio buffer is this setting here, audio buffer. This is the delay in milliseconds between you doing something on the controller or indeed on the keyboard, if you're just using it in keyboard mode, and you hearing that coming out of the speakers. If that delay is too high, you'll feel a lag on your system. You'll literally be able to feel and hear the difference. If the delay is too short, the audio will glitch and the system might glitch, it might even lock up. So the idea here is you keep lowering that and playing and playing and playing until you get to the point where things start to go wrong and you move it up a notch to the last known point where it all worked fine. And if you ever get any more problems, you just move it up a notch again. That is the first place to check if your system is running in a way that makes you think, hmm, might be pushing a bit hard. By the way, also at the top of the screen is this CPU load monitor, which will tell you whether your central processor unit is being pushed a little bit too hard. Okay, so moving on, let's move on to the music library, which is the second one down here. There's lots of settings here, as you can see, I'm just giving you the main ones. So here, you're gonna to wanna to add the music library that you want to use the software with. You should be keeping your software all in one place, your, your music all in one place. You can add more than one collection here. I think it makes more sense to leave it all in one place. By the way, you can turn on and off all these little pop-ups you're seeing here. They're very useful, but you can turn them off when you've had enough of seeing them and you've learned the software. So when you add here by clicking add and then going in your file system to where it is that you want, I'm gonna close that down now because I don't wanna add anything new at this point. When you add a directory here, the nice thing is that every time you start the software, it will check that folder. And if you've added any new music to your folder, in the meantime, it will all appear automatically in your software without you having to manually add it, which is pretty cool. So that's the place that you pull that little trick off. Now, moving on from here, there's a very important setting in here which you will probably miss unless somebody tells you. So in fact, there's a couple more. The first one I wanna show you though is this one here, the font size. So if the font size is too small for you, it's really easy to change it and also to change the spacing between the fonts. So I've made it bigger because straight out the box on my 13 inch laptop, that's just not enough. It doesn't, it doesn't give me enough, uh, enough screen space for, the, for being able to see it without my glasses on. So by setting it here, I can make it a little bit bigger and make it all a bit more comfortable. Now it also references lots of external libraries. It can work with these libraries you see here. The results are a bit variable, but the bottom line is if you're not using Tractor, Serato, Recordbox or iTunes, for instance, you can just turn that off there and it will save you a little bit of space in the tree down here on the right hand side, which is always good to do. Now, the next one is a really important one that you'll probably miss. Ticking this box here, synchronize library track metadata from and to file tags is crucial to tick. I don't even know why it's there. It should just be like, ticked automatically and not even available to you. For some reason they've decided to make it an option. What this is doing is saying, your music files have all got artists, title, album artist, year, genre, all that material recorded in them, right? MP3s and all that lot. But this software has its own database as well. If you leave that unticked, it will just use its database for that information about your music files. So if you change something, if you correct the spelling of an artist or you put the remixer in brackets after the title or whatever, and then you go and load that track on another piece of DJ software or you put it on a USB drive and take it somewhere else, it won't have those changes. Those changes live in the music file. By ticking that, you'll make sure that that happens. I went through the whole of this pretty small collection I've got here that I've been using to demo the software. Changing everything, I didn't realize that wasn't ticked. I had to do it twice, right? So don't make that mistake. That's where to change that. Now we're gonna move on to the next tab, which is controllers. So in controllers, you get to choose which mapping is selected depending upon the device that you've plugged in. Plug your device in first and then open the software. When you do that, you should see down here on the left-hand side, the mappings available for your particular software or, or it's, it's guess as to what you've plugged in. So I've clicked on this one here. There's a couple here for the Flex 4. I've clicked on this one and then you select here. Okay, I've got a Flex 4 plugged in. Which mapping do I want to use? Well, you'll go into this list of mappings that are in the software and you'll pick the one that corresponds to your controller. A word of warning, 
your controller might not be on here. And if it isn't on here, then their forums are your friend because there's always someone trying to map everything in those forums I found and they can help you. You will need to do a bit of work sometimes to get your controller to work. It's the big downside of DJ software that isn't from the manufacturer of the gear that this is necessary. And also they never work brilliantly. Like for instance, this controller was a little bit more a little bit more complex if it had like screens in the middle here or screens up here and stuff they probably well they definitely wouldn't work with the software you'd have to deal with them just not working at all and so you're best off using simple dj controllers or using dvs right using control vinyl on setups like this and we have got a guide to using dvs with mix that you could check out as well but there's where you select your controller and get it all working so moving on from the controller the next thing we're going to look at is your skin, what the software itself looks like. So that again, in fact, as with everything is down here. So in interface, you will find the skins available to you. There's not an awful lot and they haven't got a daytime skin where everything's bright and light. Uh, and I wish they had because a lot of DJs do use their gear in the daytime, right? But you can change your skin setting there and have the one that you like, which is exactly what I've done to find uh, the one that I've got loaded now. Once you've got your skin working, your next point that you definitely are going to want to make sure is set exactly how you want it is the cue behavior mode. So you're going to find that in DEX. So the cue behavior mode is at the top here and you'll see when I click on this button here that there's lots of choices. You can have mix mode, you can have Pioneer, Denon, Newmark and the final which is the stutter cue mode. These are all different behaviors when you use the cue controls. So Basically, it depends, it decides how the cue control behaves itself as, as far as whether it plays or whether it only plays when you're holding it and so on. And what the flashing lights do, uh, depending upon the hardware you're used to. It's nice that you get the choice there. I'd say just play with them. And if the cue controls aren't doing what you think they should be doing, this is the place to go to to fix that. Once you've done that, the next place to go to is to scroll past all the other bits and pieces here. You've got mixer here where you've got your crossfader curve. You can change your effects. You can change, change how auto DJ works. You can set up live broadcasting and recording, but they're all optional. This one isn't though. This is the beat gridding and this decides how beat gridding works. So this is all set up as is and that's great. But what you should decide is whether you want to assume for every track it beat grids, that it has a constant tempo throughout. And they're saying this is recommended. Now, yeah, that's fine. It is recommended. As long as every track you play has got a constant tempo. If you're a dance DJ, if you play modern electronic music, that's probably gonna be the right box to tick. What that means is that as soon as it's worked out the BPM and where the first beat is, it can put a very accurate grid over the whole waveform, over the whole track, and it's likely to be perfect every time. But if you're playing music that's non-electronic, that's funk, that's disco, that's soul, that's played by a real drummer, all that kind of stuff, then that's not going to work because the BPM varies slightly throughout. So by unticking that box, you're telling the software, look a bit more closely. You will get slightly less accurate results overall, but they will be much more accurate on the difficult tracks. So as a whole, this is the best one to tick when you've got a mixture of music in your library or rather to untick when you've got that wide mixture of music, if you're an open format DJ, basically. Now, the next thing is key detection. Key detection is great, but you're gonna to need to tell it how you want it to show you musical key. So you can have musical key show to you in the traditional musical key format. You can choose what you want and put what you want in the boxes here against the traditional musical keys. You can have it in open key format, which is what Traktor uses, or you can have it in what they've cheekily called Lancelot. Lancelot, what does that remind you of? Hmm, how about the uh, Camelot? Camelot being the way that key is taught to most DJs most of the time. And it's something we're not going to go into here. We have got a guide on key mixing and key detection over on the Digital DJ Tips website. You could go and check that out. But ultimately, if you tick Lancelot, you will get the same thing that is called Camelot in other systems where they've got permission to use that exact word. There's a bit of a a bit of an easy to crack puzzle there. Uh, and that's the one to tick for most DJs most of the time. So I suggest that you do indeed tick that box. And we've reached the end of the things that I think you really ought to change on this software to get started. I guess one more, which is probably worth pointing out because if you look at the library on here, it looks a little bit different to how it looks out of the box. I'll show you how it looks out of the box. What we'll do 
is we will start a new crate here. So I'll click create new crate. We'll just leave it called new crate and then I'll select our new crate. So out of the box, let's just put a track into this new crate so I can show you how it works. Out of the box, this is how it lists your music. It's got a little preview window. It's got a little bit of the cover art. It's got when you last played it. It's got the album it came from. Then it's got artist and title, rating, genre, key, BPM, and duration and date added. No year. There's no release year here. There happens to be one in the album title, but there's no release year here and so on. You might not want this. For instance, album. What the hell? No one needs album in a DJ collection because they're all individual tracks, right? At least everyone I know. So you could get rid of that entirely like that. So now you've got more room for everything else. You can rearrange these by clicking them and dragging them around if you rather have the title before the artist, which I do. You can make them bigger or smaller by clicking here and dragging. So you've got enough room for everything. Ultimately, you can rearrange this exactly how you want it, which is what I've done in this library here. I've got rid of the cover art. I don't need that, etc., etc., etc. And so this is well worth doing if you find that there's no room for everything you want or there's stuff you don't want on there. It's a shame that there is no use this as default setting because every time you start a new playlist or create, you have to do it over and over again, which I think should be fixed. I'm sure it can't be that hard a fix. But anyway, that is something else to do. That's not really a feature. It's just there in anywhere where you can play with lists of things in computers in this way. You can do that right so that it shouldn't be anything new to you. But maybe you didn't realise you could do it in your DJ software. You can do it in all DJ software exactly the same way. And that's it. This is now set up exactly how I like it for playing and the way you want to do it is going to be slightly different. That's all the places to look to get it working properly with your controller, with the built-in audio interface in your controller and with your music library behaving exactly how you want it to. And every single corner of the screen only having the stuff on that's important to you, making it as clean and as streamlined as possible. I hope you found this useful. If you'd like to know more about this software, check out our full mix review. And there's a little bit more about the, uh, the setup of it all in the video accompanying that review. And also, as I said earlier, we have a guide on using this with DVS, using it with digital vinyl, using it with real record decks and traditional mixes, which is interesting because it's one of the best use cases for this, I think. Finally, if you are interested in the whole idea of setting up an open source DJ system using a laptop like this one, which is set up to work on Linux. There's no Windows, there's no Mac on here. It's free operating system to start with, but also then free DJ software on there. If you're interested in that, and it does have its advantages, you can lock down the system forever. That will never break. No one's going to update anything and make you need to pay a subscription just to get your controller unlocked again or make you um, share all your data to get the latest features or anything. Once it's working, it's working forever. And if that appeals to you for any kind of reason, just because you just want to play music and forget about all that stuff, or you don't like the idea of big tech or whatever, there's loads of reasons for doing open source stuff. If the idea of setting this whole system up like this is interesting to you, then over in our Access All Areas membership, we have a deep dive on exactly this, where I talk you through from beginning to end, setting up your complete open source DJ system. And we're going to set up the exact same one that you see there over in that deep dive. Learn more all about access all areas by clicking the link underneath this video. Meanwhile though, this has been Phil in the Digital DJ Tips Studios saying get good, get out there, make the moments. I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.